Hey guys, something new today. We're uh, we're here at the record plant. Uh, big shout out to Rose and Sayoko. Uh, just spoke to Rose a moment ago. She's doing great. Sends her love to all you guys out there. Um, we're here with Dylan Dresdo. Dylan, thanks for coming and hanging out. Or I guess I'm hanging out at your spot. Dylan's here working <laughs> on the new Will I Am album. And Dylan, what you got? What you got in store for us? You talked about a couple of things on the phone you wanted to do. Yeah, I just wanted to show some people um, some good transition techniques that people can use, transitioning from different sections of the song and even between songs on records. Cool. And you said this could you could actually use this for like if you're presenting something to a label like a bunch of demos or your own absolutely. band demo you could use it from yeah. song to song too absolutely i mean it kind of you know labels notice that stuff whenever you kind of up the ante with your demos so they notice whenever your production's a little bit higher on that and these these are some of the techniques that i think are you know things you can apply to those situations cool i want you guys to be nice to dylan he's taking his time to do this for us so only flame him a little bit uh, go for it. <laughs> don't don't challenge the internet. That's foolish. But I'm gonna get out of here and let uh, and uh, and let Dylan take this thing over and show you guys some really cool stuff. Uh, by the way, uh, this is fully Pensada's place certified. This particular ITL. I love this guy. All right, guys. All right. So uh, I got a mix up um, of a song called Vampire Disco, which was uh, produced by. Uh, Zion Brock and Christian uh, Tesmer, and uh, it's a great pop song, but has to have a club feel because it's about you know being in a disco. So uh, let me just play a little bit of this for you, uh, just so you get an idea. It's a pop song, obviously, but it has to have a club appeal. So that's what we're working with. Won't somebody say? May I please have your attention? The quarantine. It's a vampire disco! They're gonna come out, I guarantee. But never before 11p. That place is a delicatessen. And the music, you're the fresh meat. Last time, I swear, my girlfriends took me there. And we danced to the hunger and the lust in the air. Okay, so you get an idea of what we're, we're dealing with here, and you can see the song already has some landscape to it. And what I kind of wanted to uh, walk you through is I get a lot of email questions from people asking me about transitions and how to set up sections and uh, some of the ways that I've done things in the past. Now, on this song, <clears throat> we wanted to really get your attention before the first verse came in, but the first verse is kind of creepy and mysterious. And a great way to do that is by doing a delay that goes into it, but we didn't want to just do it across the entire vocal part. So you can see right here, um, I'll zoom in a little bit. We've got this chorus part and the vocal sings, um, you know, uh, it's a vampire disco. Here's the solo part right here. It's a vampire disco. Now you hear that I just did the delay on the sco part. Um, the reason I did that is if you if you bring this out, like if I put it on everything here, and you listen to this track now, it, it's just all over the place. It's a vampire disco! Now in context it's even worse, because it's just a big jumbled mess whenever it comes in. It's a vampire disco! So basically all I did is I had it delay right back here on the sco part. On the analog side of things, back in the day, this was much more difficult to do. Pulling off a delay throw on analog, which was much, much more difficult, and the technology progressed, and it got a lot easier. Um, this is a 9K, an SSL 9K. So basically, the element that you'd want to do a delay throw on, you would bring up on this channel, and um, you could set your level here, and then what you would do is you would lift the large fader to mix button here, so that this large fader is no longer fitting your two mix. Essentially, you can't hear it anymore in your monitors. So then you could set your level accordingly, 
and then with automation on, you could just set, you, you would leave it cut and then uncut it on the words that you wanted to do a delay throw. Alternately, you could just leave it open and just automate the large fader up accordingly to however much set, you know, you wanted to send it. Now, you could, there were other ways you could do this. You could use a small fader or you could use, you know, even, even by automating some of the, uh, the aux sends and stuff like that. But, um, you know, this was the most common way that people did it because a lot of these SSLs were larger consoles. And when you had 100 channels, uh, it, it didn't really, you know, bug you as much, but you were wasting the resources. So in the DAW land, uh, it's a lot easier and we should be taking advantage of this. The other part is that if you did do a delay throw and there was one little thing you didn't like about it, to edit it was much more difficult than it is to edit whenever you're in a DAW. So something else that I tried here was uh, I was really trying to make this a little bit too epic up on the front. And on this first word, it's... Uh, I tried a reverse reverb technique, and basically, back in the day, what we used to do is, whenever we did this effect, we would usually work on like a two-inch, 24-track machine, and you would go to the end of the song, and then physically flip the tape over so that whenever you were playing it, it was playing backwards. Then you would take that and then feed it into a reverb and then record it uh, onto two empty tracks, and you had to make sure your documentation was good on your track sheets. Uh, a lot of, you know, guys and girls would actually solo the tracks they would record to to make sure that they didn't blast over something on mistake. But it was like, you know, one of the reasons why documentation was so important even whenever you were uh, doing some of those, those you know, techniques. Um, in the digital domain, it's a lot easier for us to pull some of this stuff off. And one of the things that I prefer to do is instead of doing the entire phrase, I just take the first syllable of the first word. And this kind of gives me a little bit more of a dramatic effect and more control over it. Um, so here we have the it's part, um, you can hear soloed here, it's, and then a quick and dirty way to do this, there's, there's multiple ways that you can do this in the digital domain. I'm going to show you one that's really quick and easy, and I encourage you to kind of um, experiment with different ways of, of achieving the same effect. Now if you look here, you can see I've got four vocals, and they're all relatively panned out to the sides. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and do just mono reverb processing on them instead of sending this into a stereo reverb or anything like that. So I just basically create an edit, and then I drag this forward a couple bars, and then I have this room to play with with the verb part. So all I have to do here is go under my audio suite, go to reverb, and I'll use D-verb. This is Pro Tools 9. Uh, in Pro Tools 10, they've actually streamlined this process a lot quicker. Um, so I encourage you to try some of the newer stuff out as well. Um, I'm just using 9 because I was on an album with this rig and I didn't want to do the transition over to 10 yet. So um, the main parameter that I think you need to focus on is the decay time here. And you probably want it to be more than 10 seconds. If you overshoot it, it's better to kind of overshoot than to undershoot because you can always fade it in. Now that's going to change the intensity of your reverb, so you have to keep that in mind. And the more you experiment with this, the more that's going to become part of your instinct, and you'll know. So I'm going to go ahead and crank up the input because a lot of times the verb ends up being dipped in level quite a bit. And I'll do eh, about 14 seconds here. Now if you listen to this it's part, it's, it's nice and long. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to reverse this to get the reverse reverb effect going. And if you listen to it now, you're going to hear the build up. Now this is cool, but at the end you're also going to hear this little sure thing that I don't normally want, but it's okay for right now because one of the things that I want to do to make this even more dramatic is I'm going to apply a flanger to it, and a really decent one to do that's really quick and easy is just using meta flanger. You know, a lot of people have been using this for a long time, and just as it comes up is actually a good starting point. So I'm just going to leave it as is, and again, we're just processing mono fi audio files here. So I'll hit process, and you'll hear this get metallic and jet flangey. So that's pretty cool, but again, there's that little thing at the end that I don't like. So what I'm going to do is zoom in here, and just get rid of this whole part, which I don't need, and move this forward. But if I move it forward, you're going to see there's still a little space here. And I could probably fade this, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and move it forward manually a little bit, and just kind of eye that in, and then do my crossfade here. Now if I play this, it sounds pretty damn cool. Check it out. 
It's a vampire disco! Now, here we have this cool thing that sets up this little part where the vocals come in for the first time in the song in, in a chorus, you know, environment. The problem with that is whenever I bring it in with the rest of the track, check this out. It's a vampire disco! So the problem there is it's really getting in the way of everything, and we're also kind of selling the vocal short because... That's the first time the vocal comes in, and we're losing that impact. Plus, we've already got elements in this mix that the producer's already programmed, like the reverse cymbal, that are already doing what I'm trying to kind of accentuate here. Now, listen to it without, and you'll hear what I'm talking about. It's a vampire disco! So you can hear with this reverse cymbal that we've got going on up here, this little part. It's a vampire it sounds a lot cleaner whenever those vocals come in for the first time. It makes a much better impact. And this is a great exclamation point going right into the verse. And when, when we have this nice, dark uh, delay throw that kind of trails off, it really sets up the, the verse in a nice way. Let's just do it one more time here. It's a vampire disco! So you can see, you know, it just didn't work that time. Now, when you try these things and they don't work, I, I don't think of them as failures because it really was a success. You tried something and it didn't work, so you move forward. If you hadn't tried it, you'd just be kind of, you know, selling yourself short sometimes. So without listening to it in context, it's difficult to really hear what's going on and how it's actually going to impact the song. Now, like I said, there's other ways to do it. I'm sure the Pensado students will you know, exchange dialogue of different ways to do reverse reverbs. You could send it from a bus to a verb, record that, bring it back. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. And I encourage you to try those out and find out which way works best for you in certain areas. Another thing that I think is also important is that you remember that you don't just have to put a flanger on it. You can try a tremolo. You can try a panning effect. You can try a combination of them. And that's something that can kind of be unique to the song and the only person that can really determine if that's right is, is if you're happy with it as you, or if you're working for a producer, uh, making sure that it's good for them. Now, if you've tried it and they don't like it, who cares? Just get rid of it. It's not that difficult for us to get rid of this stuff, whereas back in the day, if we printed this to analog, we burn up the tracks and we wasted resources that we wouldn't have had to have wasted you know, otherwise. So I think it's a good thing for you to kind of experiment and work with on quite a bit. You can also use delays instead of doing reverse reverbs. Um, you know, a good example of a reverse reverb is uh, the No Diggity song that Dre did with Blackstreet. Um, you know, a reverse delay effect, could, you know, there's a bunch of Led Zeppelin ones, you know, woman, woman, you need all that stuff. So try to think of ways that that can really work for you and don't just do just this. Expand on it and talk to other people and, and bounce ideas off of other people to come up with something that's more unique for you.